I think the first important rule is to recognize that every virus is different. They got different characteristics and we must respond accordingly based on those characteristics. Transmission mode is mainly through close physical contact with infected persons. And this includes sexual contact, mouth to mouth, skin to mouth, skin to skin contact. Yeah. Uh, what makes clade one different from clade two is that the global outbreak of clade two is mostly amongst uh, men who have sexual relationship with men they are within those circuits. However, clade one in DRC spread not just through sexual workers and sexual networks, or I should say, it doesn't spread primarily through just sexual networks, but also through family members living in the same household, where there will be some close and physical contact. Is a question that scientists are looking at is whether it's spread via air, uh, just like respiratory illnesses and diseases. It cannot be ruled out, but this will be something that will be clear in the coming months. But I think what is clear is that it doesn't spread as far and wide. The second characteristics we should look at, pay attention to, and in fact quite decisive, is the infectiousness. And this is measured by what we call a reproduction number, which is R. So the, as of now, MPOX clip one has a known R of about 1.3. This means for every 10 person, they can spread to 13 person. Uh, compared to COVID-19, MPOX clip one is far less infectious. For COVID-19 Omicron variant, for example, one person can spread to five, eight, or even 10 people. Um, and because of that high level of transmission, we require all kinds of safe management measures and even a circuit breaker in order to slow down the transmission. We are not seeing that in NPOX, click one. Uh, this is quite a decisive factor in, as we develop the response plan. The third characteristic we look at is severity. So out of 100 cases, infected cases in the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, about three to four died, which is actually quite a high number and quite a worrying number. And as Mark presented, a uh, majority are actually young people below 15. Um, the actual statistics when it comes to Europe, developed countries and to Singapore is likely to be significantly lower for two reasons. Number one is that in Africa and in DRC, the denominator is probably underestimated because many infected cases are not uh, detected nor notified. So bigger denominator, actually the severity rate should be lower uh, than three to four. And secondly is there will be better access to quality medical care uh, in Europe or in Singapore, which will lower the severity, severity rate also significantly. A fourth characteristics, which is which are the specific groups that will especially be affected by MPOX clade one? The first group is of course the vulnerable, meaning old, the old, the sick, or people who are immunocompromised. Second group is possibly the young, because as mentioned, a large proportion of cases and deaths in the DRC are children below the age of 15. And there are other factors and reasons for the high severity observed in children in the DRC. For example, there's a high prevalence of malnutrition in the DRC. The children may also be infected with other diseases. Yeah. Thirdly, they may not have access to good quality health care. All three factors are critically important um, to children when they are infected with a disease, like MPOX clade one. Uh, we believe the clinical outcomes will be uh, quite different outside of the DRC and certainly will be better in Singapore.